So, <laughs> yeah, uh, this ought to be about techno monopolies and how social networks are really monopolies in your view, right? Yep. And so, well, not all social networks, but I will get to that. Yeah, so the stage is yours, Mike. Okay, Thank thanks. Um, hi there. After some, uh, after some minor technical difficulties, uh, I am very happy to be talking to you. Uh, this is a privilege for me. Uh, my name is Mike, uh, but most, of, most people in the technical communities and hacker communities call me Rysiek for some reason or other. Let's not get into the reason. Uh, I work at the Free and Open Source Software Foundation in Poland. Um, it's a NGO that, um, that promotes free software and uh, open source uh, in different contexts, in educational contexts, in, in business contexts, in, in, in any, any context. And I'm particularly interested in anything that has to do with freedom of speech, with uh, human rights in the digital era, in the digital um, world. So, techno monopolies. First of all, or in before, before we get started, I am going to use some examples that are probably familiar to most of you, uh, and I will have to do them fast. So they will be a little bit simplified. I apologize for that, but you have been warned. Um, okay, so techno is the is the, is the simple part of the of the of this word. Uh, it's the part that didn't work for a few minutes right now. Uh, but what are monopolies? I think that you know monopolies are quite. Um, we, we all know what what a monopoly is, right? That's that's basically the more or less the, the definition. You you have either the only supplier of a product or a service on a given market, or there are some high barriers of entry to the market, or there is no good sub substitute for a given product and service, let's go through that. That's obvious, right? Um, for example, um, you know, when there's only one supplier of a product or a service, that's a monopoly full stop. Uh, in the 90s in Poland, we had only one supplier, only one uh, telephone company. It's, it was called Telekomunikacja Polska, and it was obviously a monopoly. Um, that's no longer the case thanks to anti-monopoly laws, and I know that this was also the case in many other uh, countries and in many other markets. Um, so, but what, what, what are these? What are high barriers of, of entry? For example, a high barrier of entry can be uh, a patent system. Right? Uh, when, when somebody offers a product or a service based on uh, some patented technology, some, uh, somebody else has to license the technology from this company or this, uh, this person to be able to uh, also uh, provide this service or this, um, uh, this product. Um, so this is a high barrier of entry, right? Because because the the price of the price of the uh, patent license can be uh, can be very high, for example, right? What are uh, well, what does it mean to, that there is no good substitute? Let's just think about uh, Microsoft Office binary um, binary formats five years ago, right? There was no good substitute for Microsoft Office as far as reading and writing those particular formats. Where it was concerned, right? Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, that was um, that was the case. This was the only product that actually had this functionality. However, we might um, look at this particular product. So, what users got was v uh, vendor lock-in in a box. They bought software, and they were vendor locked because nobody else could actually interface with these uh, with these files. Uh, what is a healthy market for, uh, to, on the other side, right? Uh, what's the healthy uh, market? For example, mobile networks or, or mobile, mobile um, uh, network operators. Well, that's a, more or less a, a, a healthy market, right? Because you can choose. There, there are well-established standards. There is, uh, the, you can keep contact uh, with other people regardless of which network they use or even in which country they are, right? The, the prices might change a little bit, but this is not uh, prohibiting you from from contacting these, these people within this particular service, so you can freely and independently select both the provider and the device without worrying whether or not you will keep contact with the people that are using this particular provider or using this particular kind of device, right? This is exactly, uh, for example, this is exactly why uh, Jolla Mobile could enter the market, right? Because there were standards, they could just drop their uh, devices on the, on the market and you know, the, the, the service providers um, didn't really care but couldn't stop it in any way. Um, okay, another example, also obvious, uh, well, that's email, right? Also, well-established standards, so anybody can write 
a email server uh, or anybody can run an email server right everybody knows how uh, well everybody can check how to do that and write their own uh, or, or, or set up their own server uh, and again it's possible to keep contact regardless whether I'm using uh, my own uh, email server or my hackerspaces email server and somebody else here uses for example Gmail or whatever mail um, server right this is irrelevant I can select both the user agent and the uh, service provider and I can I can I, I can I can be more or less sure that I will be able to keep contact with anybody using this particular kind of service regardless of the provider and the user agent agent they are um, they are using now a little bit of history web uh, web designers hold um, you know grab something um, yeah do, some, do we have any web designers here web web uh, developers here hands up yay do you remember this beautiful uh, logo uh, you know embrace extend Explorer websites created for a particular browser you know 2006 try to make a try to make a website that works in in different browsers good luck with that uh, so there were barriers to selecting a browser freely right there were barriers for users the user cannot, could not select a browser freely because most uh, websites were written for Internet Explorer right uh, there were barriers for website creators because they had you know standards they could read and see oh so I should write this website in this particular way oh but that doesn't work for this particular browser and this is the most used browser so I should write for that but how to, to write for that there are no standards um, and there were barriers uh, of entry for uh, for browser creators for browser developers right because they had to not only implement the standards but also somehow manage to show the websites written for this particular uh, browser in a way that um, was let's call it usable right uh, and this happened so we got uh, a an organization that got us back on on track by uh, insisting to use standards properly um, and uh, and writing a good product creating a good, a good product that users wanted to use um, and thanks to that we can now independ independently choose um, a browser um, so so some of the web developers probably remember these old black dark times and those old black times are somewhere in our lore um, in for example like like that right um, but this is this is a very ironical you know uh, picture most of us do not uh, get the irony yet I will get back to the irony in this picture some of you might might already have a you know idea what that might be anyway so healthy market uh, is Google search well is web search a healthy market well there is a low barrier of entry more or less uh, there are several providers already so we can choose a provider regardless of Google's dominance. We have a dominant player on the market, but we can choose to use, for example, DuckDuckGo or anything else, right? So I, wouldn't, I would say that this is indeed some, um, um, an example of healthy market. Okay, so if we have, uh, if we have a mobile healthy market and we have, a, for example, mobile network uh, service providers, um, we can choose, you know, we can tier it we can we can see okay so this is the service right the service is mobile telephony and data transmission or whatever we call it but then we have the provider we can select the provider and then we can select the device completely independently of uh, of each other right so uh, I don't know T-Mobile or Orange doesn't care what kind of uh, what kind of phone I use as long as it's compliant to standards uh, social networks is this is how we uh, this is how we see uh, the social networks market right we have the social networks market and we can choose from several providers for example Twitter Facebook and Google and we can use a different let's call it user agent right or or the terminal that we use to to, um, to use the service for example Twitter com or Facebook com or plus Google com or whatever desktop clients mobile clients that are anointed by those um, uh, by those companies but something's wrong with this uh, picture and I will get back to that in a minute but um, but first of all let's do a small Gedanken experiment right a small thought experiment what would happen like we all know uh, that in Europe and in many other places in in, in world we can use the same power socket 
right? We have a we have an electrical device. Uh, also, I would like to welcome all the people from Great Britain here. Um, uh, so we have a, an electrical device, and thanks to the fact that it's basically standardized, we can just plug it in and it'll work, right? Without burning, without crashing, without doing something uh, nasty, hopefully. Uh, but what would happen if a, if a large manufacturer of, of electrical devices decided, well, it would be more conducive to my business, it would be more, you know, mm, interesting for me to provide my own plug standard, right? I will make my own plugs, I will make my own uh, sockets, right? And if you want to use my devices, you will have to have my sockets in your home, right? Something's wrong with that, wouldn't we agree? I mean, probably the customers would say, well, that's crazy, I will not lie, you know, create new sockets at my, in my home just to use the devices of this particular, uh, this particular uh, company. That's, that's crazy. Um, media would probably be quite interested in this, um, this crazy um, um, idea. Um, and uh, and probably we would get uh, probably we would some some kind of agency or institution would get involved and try to make this particular company adhere to sta to standards, right? They, so they will say, well, you know, here we do this our way. We have the standards that say that there are like 230 volts, and you know you have those two um, those two. Um, uh, points in the plug, and this this is the way we do that. Either play along or see ya, right? Uh, but the interesting thing is, this is obvious for us when we're talking about standard wall plugs, but this is not obvious to, uh, to us when we're talking about electrical cars. Oh yeah, like uh, we're we're, uh, we're going we're doing a um, off topic and off topic right now. No, we're not. But okay. So when we're dealing with electrical cars, every single manufacturer of electrical cars is you know doing their own sockets they're doing their own um, electrical circuits they're doing their own ways of 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 charging those uh, those cars right this is crazy and they are actually uh, then going into deals with cities or countries or or some local communities and saying listen uh, we will give you a discount or we will even somehow support you if you will support our particular kind of electrical car and electrical power socket for cars on your terrain. So what we get, even though we seem to, to have a market, right? So this company produces electrical cars, the, the, this company produces electrical cars, this company is trying to produce ele electrical cars, but okay, let's play along. Uh, so we, we seem to think that this is a, a market, but what we actually get are localized monopolies. Right? You cannot get your electrical car that is compatible with this particular company's deal with this particular city and go to another city and hope to charge that car. Oh, that's not good. Uh, so, getting back on track. Getting back on track. Uh, who has a Facebook account? Hands high, hands high, don't lie. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> Uh, okay, and why won't you close it and move it to move to Diaspora and Google Plus? This is not a hands-up question, right? Um, so, <laughs> because because we all know because we all know the answer, right? We, you know, all my friends are on Facebook, right? All my contacts are on Facebook, and no other providers, uh, uh, no other provider provides the service of contacting those people on Facebook. Oh wait, this sounds like a monopoly, doesn't it? And this is exactly the same thing we had. Here, I cannot charge my car here, right? I have to charge my car here because this is the deal I get with this particular manufacturer. So I would say that this is more or less uh, the same thing because Facebook is the only provider of the service of keeping in touch with people that use Facebook. Obviously, you can find other ways of connecting with those people just as you can find other ways of getting from point A to point B instead of electrical car, right? But if you want to use an electrical car in this city and that city, you're not going to do that. If you want to use your, for example, Twitter account to connect to Facebook users, this is not going to, uh, to work. So while we see this, remember the slide? The slide was like five minutes ago. Hope you remember it. So uh, when we think about social networks, we think about this, this, kind of, uh, this kind of thing, right? When we have, we can select the provider, we can select the user agent, only we can't because there are actually vertically integrated monopolies in the, in the service of 
contacting you with Facebook users, there is only one provider. Guess who's that, right? And there is only one user agent, or there are several user agents, but they are all anointed and accepted by a particular company, right? You cannot have a Twitter client using Facebook. Well, it's, it's absurd, but for some reason, it's not absurd for us to uh, ac uh, expect that a, I don't know, Panasonic uh, electrical device will work with a power socket made by some uh, other company, right? So why this is, uh, this is accepted and that not? But let's go, uh, let's go, let's go further. The, the point here is that we cannot, ch we cannot freely choose you know, the, every single element of, you know, in this market. This is not a single market. Those are three different markets. Those are three different monopolies. Who has more than one account? Who has an account on Facebook or, and Twitter or Google Plus and Twitter, or etc.? Why? Why? Do you have several different power sockets at home? I'm not, I'm not trolling. I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to make a point, which also sometimes is actually trolling. Uh, so, this is also the case, right? Uh, we have other services. We, we seem to have a single, I don't know, cloud drive market. Only we don't. We cannot easily uh, switch to providers. We would have to download everything from provider A and move to provider B. Only their, um, their formats are, might not exactly be, for example, metadata formats might not exactly be f fully compatible. And you can only use this client with this particular uh, provider and also uh, internet in instant messaging right this is the same situation we have Skype we have iMessage we had MSN but now it's Skynet right Sky.net uh, we kind of have GTOC and XMPP which is nice right only we are we are slowly getting a problem with that because Google has announced some time ago that nah, maybe we should move into Hangouts and like you know close the uh, server to server uh, service. Oh, by the way, uh, Facebook chat actually uses XMPP. You, probably you know that, right? On the back end, but they just don't let other servers connect th to their servers. And for example, they, don't, they won't let Warsaw Hackerspace Jabber server talk to Facebook server, right? It's not their business um, strategy. So this is, uh, this is the vertical integration, right? And this last thing, the GTOC, the Google thing, is the most interesting, I would say because it, it shows uh, another thing. It shows the network effect, right? Uh, obviously, we, will, we, will, we would say, oh, but it's more convenient that way. Google is such, has such a nice uh, interface, and you know, well, everybody uses Google, so why shouldn't I use Google? I can make my decisions for myself, right? I can make my decisions uh, for myself. Unfortunately, there's this little thing called the network effect, which is pretty simple. The more people use a given communication platform, the more people will start using it. Right? Or the more people use it, the more people use it, which sounds silly. Uh, but this, this is obvious, right? The more people use a telephone, you know, started to use telephone, the more people wanted to use the, the telephone service, right? Because so that to stay in touch with, with those people, this is the same uh, effect that keeps you in Facebook, right? Our, all our friends are there. Uh, but it gets a little bit, it's get, it gets a little bit hairy at some point because when you have a critical mass of users, it's harder to stay outside, right? Because you get, nah, all my friends are there, maybe I should join. It's not only maybe I can go out or maybe I can't because all my friends are here. No, no, it's, it's sometimes it's like, oh, maybe I should join. Do we have any person here that had to join Facebook or Twitter or Google because it was somehow required by their school or university or their Thank you, there's one place, two, three, four, more, yes, thank you. See, this is how it works. Some of you maybe didn't want to join, but, they had you, but you had to join because other people joined and we thought it was obvious to make a group on Facebook or whatever, right? But that also means that the more power, uh, th th that means more power to the entity controlling the platform because to join Facebook, you had to accept Facebook's terms of service. So suddenly, somehow, f accepting Facebook terms of service was a requirement for you to get your education. I don't get that. Do, do we see a problem here, right? There's something, something, something fishing with, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, image. And now we're getting back to the irony. Who uses Google Chrome? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Uh, who uses Google Chrome as their main browser? Okay, who doesn't use any other browser rather? 
Okay, so there are even people like that. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the second question. So, but we already know what happens when people use, you know, when, the, when we have a monoculture of browsers, of closed source, unforkable browsers, right? We have a Chromium project, but we don't know what Google will do with Chrome in a year. Maybe they will uh, push for their SPDY uh, protocol. Maybe they will break the internet other, in, some, in some other interesting ways like they're trying to do with XMPP, right? Do you see the irony here? We, we swapped Internet Explorer browsers with, uh, with the, the other kind of the same problem. Uh, so look who's talking. Okay, who uses Google's uh, XMPP or GTalk? Uh, who has any other account? Hands up. Okay, that's that's great. That's great. Thank God I'm here and not somewhere else. Uh, and uses it. This is the this is the important part. This is a this is a very important question because if we all move to GTalk, Google will be able to just say, well, whatever. We I have 99% or 90% of users of Jabber, or I don't care about the rest. Right? I I can just close it off. Good luck with that. Embrace, extend. Extinguish, and this is exactly uh, my point. This is a freedom ecology. This is an e ecology of freedom. This is not only our own decision. If Google does that, I will not join Google, right? But if Google does that, I will suddenly stop being able to communicate via XMPP with 90% of my contacts on XMPP, right? So th that decision is not only ours to make, right? I didn't make that decision. Somebody made it for me. And it's not like, you know, somebody. I will show you know, like with my finger, right? But it's just happened somehow. So, uh, <laughs> what to do, what to do, what to do? Uh, we have, obviously we have laws, we have agencies against monopolies. First thing to do is to start uh, looking at monopolies as if they were actually monopolies, right? We have some monopolies that we do not recognize as monopolies. Maybe we should start doing so and start thinking about that. But from the user's perspective, uh, it's actually easier. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually, it's actually not that hard. You know, you can use Diaspora. Who, who has a Diaspora account? Yay, hooray. Let's swap our contacts afterwards. Um, uh, so you can use some other XMPP service, which you already do. Uh, your hackerspace or your local users group or your whatever company, you know, most of companies have email servers. Most, most uh, hacker spaces have email servers and some other servers. Why not XMPP? Why not Diaspora or some other social network, right? Just decentralize it. Be done with it. Uh, right. So, right? I mean, if you can, just do that. Just run your server. Just run your service. Just keep your, keep your data keep your data close to you and keep your friends close to you and not to Mr. Zuckerberg or, or, uh, or, or um, whoever. It's easier. And once you do that, you know, the order is great. It feels great. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot. I hope it wasn't too fast. I had only 30 minutes. And I saw the cards that were being shown to me. I saw that. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope we can meet at some diaspora or some other decentralized social uh, or a social network. And are there any questions? Yeah, we have five minutes for questions. Oh my god, five minutes. So, you spoke about social network, when I have to make this question. Last time I checked, uh, there were at least three or four uh, open source slash free mm, software social network which are not compatible one with each other. Diaspora is one of these, right? The Diaspora doesn't know how to talk with Identica, and Identica doesn't know how to talk with Lorea, and Lorea doesn't know how to talk with anybody, I think. Uh, yeah, do we have, uh, do we have um, any Diaspora developers, or Fendica developers, or, or StatusNet developers here, etc., etc.? Do, do any of you uh, are, uh, does anybody of, of those developers are, is, um, uh, on, the, on the WC3, uh, W3C um, Federated Social Web uh, mailing list. There was a huge thread about maybe trying to finally federate between those networks, and I'm all for that. That would be great. So if the, if the developers hear that, I mean, people want that. And this is the only way to, to actually remove the, the biggest impediment uh, for users 
um, so that they can use the, uh, the, so the, the, social, the federated social web, right? The embeddement being, which should I use and why? Yes. Um, yeah, apparently we, we have to, to start, uh, the, the next year I'll say that we, we, we have to start setting up for the next talk. Uh, so I, I will just give you the, the last question, which was on that microphone over there. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, there are institutions who are enforcing uh, other, that there are no monopolies in other areas. Do you think it's realistic that this will happen also in these areas? Um, it's a good question. Uh, during a discussion before this talk, uh, few hours um, ago, uh, somebody asked me, uh, have you heard about the f uh, joint French and German uh, search engine? Just Google it. Uh, <laughs> that, was a, that was an idea of, of you know, of, uh, fighting with the monopoly of, of, of Google. And obviously not every, single, not every single thing that such an agency or institution or whatever can do mm, will be effective and, and will be actually doing something good. But my point is, I don't know about those agencies. I don't work there. I don't even really know the names of them. But I know they, they, are, they are there somewhere. But maybe we should start thinking about monopolies as monopolies. Maybe this is where we, where, where we should start. This is the easiest place, actually, right? Just switch something in your head and, and, and accept the consequences of, of you know, these, these strange little uh, blocks here, right? Thanks. Thank Cool. Uh...